Hello, friends. It's Taylor. Welcome back to Chasing Wonder, the show where we just talk about how to find a little extra in our ordinary. Last week, we challenged you to give us a call and leave us a voicemail sharing your moment of wonder. And I want to thank everybody who called in and shared, you know, stories and experiences that that you've been having. We're going to be sharing these each and every week. And today we got a message from longtime listener of the show, Nicholas, who had an interesting thing happen. You know, he tried something and it didn't go according to plan. Check out what Nicholas had to say. Hey, Taylor, uh, Taylor Hughes. Uh, this is uh, Nicholas, first-time caller, a uh, long-time listener. Um, for me, my way of chasing wonder, something exciting that happened this week, is I tried something new. I went all in on something new, something big that would have been very expensive, could have been life-changing, and I I quit. I I realized during the week that it was not for me, and I and normally. I've never quit anything in my life once I start something, but everything in my body was like, you know what? It's okay. You tried, but uh, this isn't for you. And I don't feel like a failure. And that feels very good. Nicholas, thank you so much for sharing. And friends, I think this is a perfect segue into what we're going to talk about today, because let's be real. Sometimes you have a plan and you think things are going to work out a certain way and they don't. And you know what? Some of the most successful people that I've met in life and in business have given themselves permission to either try something and fail or try something and realize that that thing is not for them. That's okay. It's just one step closer to the place that you really need to be in. So thank you, Nicholas, for sharing. And friends, if you'd like to be included on a future episode, send a message to 323-524-7456. Just give us a call, leave a message at 323-524-7456. And who knows, we might feature your moment of wonder on a future show. So uh, I've been playing guitar in the in the shed because that's where I play now. You know, I used to play Uh, in a band when I was younger, and now I just lock myself in this little shed and I play. And I I remember this song that I used to hear with my dad in the car. Um, Maybe maybe you've heard this song. Uh, Forgive what you're about to hear. Well, if you ever plan to mow to west, there it is, something like that. Jack, take my way, that's the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. Well, it winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way. Get your kicks on Route 66. You know that song? Have you heard that song? It's old-timey. It's old-timey rock and roll, baby. Um, I, I thought about that song for, for a few reasons. Number one... I don't know why I'm yelling. I'm just excited and a little uh, dorked out that I just sang on this thing. Number one, I I thought about this song because when I was a kid, you know, going for a cruise with my dad in the car was like, it was the coolest thing. It's like what we, it it was our, it was our, our version of going to the movies. You know, we, we didn't really do that much as a kid. We would, we would just go cruising and we're getting ready right now. I'm, I'm packing up the car. We've been working on our little trailer. We got a vintage trailer. We decided that this year, since, you know, things are are still a little crazy in 2021. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not like uh, it's not like when the clock struck midnight on December 31st, everything, uh, you know, everything went back to normal. We're still in this weird, weird version of reality that we all live in. And we've been trying to figure out w- ways that we can, you know, get out there with our kids and have fun and do stuff that's interesting. And, uh, and we're so, so used to traveling, but we haven't been able to do that, that we got a, we bought a, an old beat up trailer, a 1966 Aljo trailer. And we, uh, we fixed it up and put some paint on it and, uh, and put some comfy mattresses in there. And we, we now take these little camping trips. And so, you know, we can go out in the middle of nowhere out in the woods or, you know, just somewhere where we're not having to worry about social distancing and all that. Just be out in the woods with the kids or, you know, go find a beach with without a bunch of people on it and just just camp and explore. And we're getting ready to do that. And so as I sat down to, 
you know, think about what I wanted to share on the podcast this week as we continue to chase wonder and just try to find a little extra in our ordinary. I thought about going on these trips with my dad. You see, my dad's trips were never overnight. They were never these big, elaborate, you know, camping adventures. We did some of that, but a trip with my dad in the car was all about cruising. In fact, that song Route 66 is so stuck in my head because we grew up in Azusa, California on 5th Street, which turns into Foothill, which is Route 66. So I literally grew up on Route 66. And every time I hear that song, it just takes me back to being a kid with my dad and cruising around. And so that's what we're going to talk about today on Chasing Wonder. I want to talk to you about glass bottles and vintage Chevys. I can still smell the original interior and feel the way the seats would rumble beneath me as we cruise down every back alley in my childhood neighborhood. Azusa has all these little streets that aren't really streets, you know, little dirt roads behind houses. And my dad would navigate these like a, like a fighter pilot in Star Wars. He just knew his way around. And so as a kid, there was nothing better than riding with my dad in his 1954 Chevy. It was the early 80s, but you wouldn't hear, you know, when we turn on the radio, it's not like you would hear Duran Duran or Bon Jovi coming through. Instead, you would just, you you would hear my dad's old school nature coming through the radio. Like my dad is an old school guy. And so we would listen to old school music. And so you'd pull up at the light and the person next to you would be cranking, Papa, don't preach. Uh, (laughs) But my dad would be teaching me the good news about groups like the Supremes and Dick Dale, and Chuck Berry. And it didn't matter where we were headed. The first stop was always the same. It was the Little Pepsi in a Bottle Store. Now, that's not that's not his real name. In fact, I don't even know the name of the little market. That's just a few blocks from uh, where I grew up in Azusa. But all I know is that they sold these little glass bottles of Pepsi, which at the time was a rare treat. When I was a kid, you know, now you can get a glass bottle of Coke or Pepsi anywhere and the novelty's kind of worn off. But in the 80s, everything was plastic or the tin cans. The only place you seem to get these glass bottles were at this little market down the street from our house or if you took a trip down to Mexico. I can't tell you why the soda tasted better out of the glass bottle than it did when you got it out of a can. For some reason, it tasted colder out of that glass bottle. But I can tell you this, uh, nothing made me feel more like a grown-up than sitting next to my dad on the bench seat of his 54 Chevy, drinking a glass bottle of soda. There was no air conditioning in the car. And even if there was, my dad would not have used it. He called it a 255 air conditioner. And I'd say, Dad, what's a 255? He's like, that's two windows rolled down while you drive 55 miles an hour. And while he had the windows down, he would he would do this thing where he would rest his elbow on the edge of the window seal, and his arm was long enough that he could reach up and hold on to the top of the car. And as a kid, I, I was desperate to try to be able to do that. I would measure my growth by when I, you know, I put my arm on the window seal and see how far my fingers were from the top of the car. And I would just try to mimic him, even though I can never quite reach. My dad would also play tricks on us. You know, if you're trying to drink your soda while driving, he would, he would make a joke by tapping on the brakes and smiling to remind you that you should only take a drink when the driver drinks. Otherwise you're going to get soda all over yourself. And the second stop usually was this road by our house that we called the roller coaster road. I later learned that it was called Sierra Madre Boulevard. This road had the biggest dip in the middle of it. And the only thing that came close to the drop was the Pirates of the Caribbean dip at Disneyland. And there were these signs on the road that would warn you at a certain point to slow down. But my dad, in his great wisdom, had realized that if you just hit the gas really hard at that sign, you could get airborne when you came back up the other side. Your stomach would fly up into your throat and very often you would fly up into the ceiling and make contact because this car had no seatbelts and it was the 80s. We didn't even have seatbelt laws. Look, I know this was very unsafe. It was terrifying, but it is one of my favorite moments of childhood. And luckily, I was able to experience this several hundred times uh, before they ruined the whole thing by fixing the road a couple years ago. When I was a kid, we, we never took the freeway to get anywhere. And it's not because the car couldn't handle it. it. It totally could. My dad just, he loved the drive so much that he wanted it to be as long as possible. 
Remember, his whole idea was cruising. And when you're cruising in the Chevy, there's no curfews and there's no deadlines. You're gonna get where you get when you get there. And so my dad would take every side street, every back road, every alley. And because we would go these unconventional ways, we would see things that you wouldn't see otherwise. You know, we'd discover a park that we never knew about. And we'd often pull over to check out a yard sale or just to climb a tree because my dad said, look, that tree is begging to be climbed. You know, we lived like 45 minutes from the beach, but it would often take two hours or more because my dad decided that we had to stop and have all these little adventures along the way. And as I, I think about this, I, I realized from my dad that these things weren't distractions to him or delays that were keeping us from our destination. In fact, often the best stories and memories that I have growing up took place because our plans got interrupted. And I realized if I had to summarize my dad's attitude toward life, I could do it in, in one phrase. It would be this, the ride is more important than the destination. It's so counterintuitive to what we think about today. I mean, let's be real. Most of us are looking at our lives right now and feeling like they've been completely interrupted. You know, the beginning of the last year, you had all these plans and things in the work. And around February, March, they just all came to a halt. And, and, and it looks very different than maybe you intended. So I've been trying to figure out how I can take my dad's philosophy of cruising and apply it to today and to what we're going through. You know, when we were kids, if we were ever having a bad day or we were bored, my dad would just say, let's go cruise. And I think if someone said that to you today or to me, we would probably respond by saying, well, where are we going? Or what are we going to do when we get there? Or why are we doing that? But for my dad, that was never his concern. He understood something that I think we all need to realize. It's that ultimately we're going to end up where the road takes us. We can't control everything that happens, but we can choose to enjoy the journey. Now, friends, look, I, I don't want to make it sound like my dad had a perfect life or that it was carefree and easy. He, you know, he's got challenges like all of us, but he's chosen to not let those challenges keep him from enjoying every single day. I'll be honest with you, in the, in the past year, you know, I've had so many moments where I've been so worried about where we're going and where things are headed that I, I've forgotten to enjoy the journey. And I've spent, you know, many, many hours and lots of money on, on books and therapy and meditation. And those are, those are all beautiful, amazing things. And I'm grateful for them. And I, and I believe in those things. But when you think about it, you know, meditation and therapy and, and these self-help books are all trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to get us to have that attitude my dad has of just being present and in the moment. So I want to invite you, wherever you're at today, maybe you feel like, you know, the, these interruptions that have happened are keeping you from the thing that you really want to be doing. But the truth is there could be something beautiful right around the corner. A couple years ago, we went to the UK for the first time. And, uh, and, and then we were over in Ireland and we were having this amazing time. We had this huge plan. We rented a car and we were going to drive Katie and I and, um, and her brother and, and his wife and my in-laws. We were going to drive across, you know, all of Ireland to see these cliffs. And we were so excited about it. And about an hour into our trip, the car broke down. And we called the rental car company and they said, you know, it's going to be a couple hours till we can send someone out. And we were just realizing as we were doing the math of how long it was going to take us to get a ride back, to get a new car, to start the journey again, that, that our plans had kind of been ruined. And rather than just sit there and be sad for ourselves, we thought, let's take a walk. And we walked um, literally like three blocks and turned the corner and there was this majestic castle. I mean, this amazing castle that turned out it was built in like the year 1200 and it was just beautiful. And we went in and they had a little pub and we grabbed a drink and we had some food. And then I, I, I just asked the people, I said, you know, do you guys ever give tours of the castle? And the lady there said, well, we don't really, but if you want one, we'll give you one. And we went on this incredible tour where we were taken through parts of this castle that had been untouched. I mean, the furniture from the early like 1200s was still there and all dust everywhere and going through corridors and them saying like, watch out for the floorboards here. If you step there, you'll fall through. It, it was, it was amazing. It was this insane adventure that would have never happened had our original plans not been interrupted. 
And I don't want to downplay, you know, the great things that you were going to do in 2020. But all I can say is that, look, if you find yourself in the middle of an interruption, rather than getting stuck in this moment of frustration, I'd encourage you to, to really think about what could be around the corner if we just can get into this present state of mind to say like, look, I'm just going to be here and that's okay. I'm just going to exist in this moment and look for something incredible to come around. Yeah, I, I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to reset my mind so that I can have this, you know, way of approaching life the way my dad does. And look, I'll be honest, I don't have the default that he has. His default is just to always think that today's going to be wonderful and he's going to make new friends and things are going to be great. Uh, I, I don't know how to get myself there, but I know what the first step is for me today. And the first step is for me today is to step away from the computer, to call my dad and to thank him for, you know, sharing these moments with me and then to put my kids in the car, throw on some oldies and go find a road we've never been on and drive down it. And my hope for you today, friends, is not that things go totally according to plan, but that you find yourself in the middle of a wonderful interruption where you make a memory that's going to last a lifetime. So friends, until I see you next time, go out there and keep chasing wonder. Wonder. 